Welcome to another episode of Becoming Fully Human. I'm Father Daniel Renaud. I'm an oblate of Mary Immaculate. And today we are going to look at the mystery and the fascination that people have for icons. Icons are a form of liturgical art that have become more and more popular in the Roman Catholic world and in other Christian traditions, but they originally come from us from the East, i.e., the Christian and Greek Orthodox. There are also Ukrainian Catholics who venerate icons. By the way, we don't uh, adore an icon, we venerate it. At least in the East, the idea is that some of the holiness of the person in the picture is coming through the matter. And this is a very important point about icons, but also about this show, that we both receive and express the spiritual through the material. In many ways, one way of saying this is to say that matter matters. You know, we are made of our five senses. There's this great story about this woman who has decided she was going to rebel against God. And so she's in church and she decides she's not going to listen to anything and she puts her hands on her eyes. And at one point during the sensing, when incense is being used, it goes into her nose and she hears a murmur through her ear and it says, you don't want me to get through your ears and your eyes, but I can get through your nose. The idea being that often God speaks to us through matter. And that certainly is a fundamental idea of icons. Icons speak about the realm of God and about the spiritual through very material, real things of the world. In fact, they're a microcosm of the world because icons are made of egg tempera. We use eggs to uh, write icons. We use mineral and vegetal uh, vegetables um, colors in order to make the paint. So everything about an icon speaks about how the material gives us access to the spiritual. Today we're going to do something quite special. We're going to have uh, someone we will interview. We will go to his studio. Father Clyde Rausch is an iconographer and he's going to help us to look at and understand maybe a little more what icons are about as a window into the kingdom of God. So let's go, come on. So we are here with Father Clyde Rausch, uh, Oblate Missionary, who is at the Oblate School of Theology. We're in his studio, and as I said, Father Clyde is an iconographer, and he's gonna tell us about iconography. I will ask him some questions to know more about the mystery of what icons are all about. So thank you for having us um, this morning. We know you're a busy man, so it's good to be in your studio today. So tell us first, how did you come about um, starting to do iconography? Well, uh, as a, I, I, I grew up in South Dakota, ended up here at Oblate School of Theology to do theology. And then uh, as I was doing that theology, I became interested in the mission in, in Scandinavia. And, and so then I was, uh, when I finished, was ordained, then they sent me to Sweden. Now I was in Sweden about 15 years. Uh, I was there long, much longer than that. But after 15 years, I had uh, gotten to know the Swedes somewhat. But Swedes are very private people mm. and not easy to, to uh, get into the inside of them. In fact, pretty difficult. And so I began, um, we had a, a church, an old church, uh, built in the 1200s in the parish, a small country church. But, well, it was Catholic at one time, and then it became Lutheran. In that church, the paintings were done by the walls and the ceiling and everything by a, a, uh, a Swedish man who was kind of naive. It was very simple. Like up in the choir loft, you had this, this famous uh, painting of the devil playing chess with somebody to get the soul. Who's going to get the soul of this person? That's, mm. that's, that's painted up there. That's a different kind of theology. <laughs> yes, yeah. it, it <laughs> certainly it is. Well, anyway, so at the same time, in that same time period, they built the cathedral in Uppsala, the, the Catholic Church. And they brought in people from Belgium, Holland, all, all of Germany, Italians and everything. And it's, it, and it's Gothic. It's very busy. You know, I was up... I, moved from the, the Stockholm area to the north, close to the Arctic Circle. 
And, 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 and there, uh, that's, that's close to Russia. And, and I remembered that the, the Vikings had gone to Russia. And then I start thinking that maybe the art, the, the art of icons would speak more to these people because of their contemplative kind of uh, life and, 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 and private than, than the gaudiness of, of the, uh, the, uh, the cathedral. Uh, I just want to stop you here. So you're saying basically that you discovered that a way to evangelize people who were very private might be through iconography because you saw that art had a contemplative side that might appeal to the people that you had the charge of as a shepherd and priest. That's right. That's right. And and uh, so 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 I asked this brother who was also an oblate. I said, "Would you?" There was at the time this this uh, a, a man from Holland that was in Sweden. He had learned to. He went to Russia and studied iconography and, and how to paint right icons. And, and so he began giving courses in, in this, how to do this. And so I said to this brother, Olaf, I said, should we invite him up here to our little retreat place in, in, in the woods and have, us, have him teach us? Oh, yes, he said, I used to paint with oil painting. And so, so we invited him up there. Yeah. And, and to make a long story short, he came up every six months, got us started, and, and then we would paint on our own for six months, and then he'd come up there and be, you know, either shocked or happy, <laughs> because sometimes we made heresy. <laughs> yes. I mean, anyway, so we made some mistakes, and and uh, but but we had the people we had that we invited were all from the village and, and around there. They were Baptists, Lutherans, uh, uh, Pentecostals. We. Uh, we had everybody there, and we were a couple of Catholics too. <laughs> but but they fell in love with this, and they the first icon they we had them or uh, well the, the 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 guy that taught us he had them paint Mary and the Christ Child, oh, okay. and, and then he would always have reflections around that, uh, what we were what we were talking. He would give the theology behind it, and 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 and, and this car we had at one point fifteen students. You know, you know, and, they, and of course, you were a student in there too. I, I was a student. You were and, learning to write icons. Now, tell yeah. us why is it that we say write icons and not paint icons? Why do we say that? Because it, at least in the Orthodox Church in Russia, they they put the level of icons on the same level as Scripture, Holy Scripture. Okay. And so, so of course, the Scripture is written. It's the written word, and 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 and. When, when, when people translate or whatever, they're very careful about how they're translating the written word. And then, then, uh, then they say, well, the basis for, for icons is that a God came into and became flesh in Mary and became visible. So now we, so now we have the God visible. And so then there was this discussion in, in the early Christians about images and and but that got solved and, and, because and, the incarnation yes, tells right. us that if we do icons if we if we write icons it's a way to extend that incarnation so to speak that's right well it uh, not only extend it but i mean that we ourselves just as through baptism we are we are the body we are the hands oh, and the yes. face and the flesh uh, and and god's presence in us and and and, and, and so what God did himself, he made himself visible. Yeah. And, 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 and so then it's an act of faith, whether, whether you believe that or not. And, and so through the images, just like some people discover God by reading scripture. Now, now the others are helped to believe, come to believe through these images, mm. through icons. And would you say then that um, when, you, uh, when you write an icon, are you praying when you're doing that? It's, I tell you what, in anything that we're trying to learn, whether it's the piano or anything else, in the beginning, the technique keeps you from really enjoying the, the melody. You've got the fingers got to go this way, that way. So I'd say even when I have students, 
it's very difficult to make have it be a prayer in the beginning. At the beginning, because you're so yeah. focused on the technique. You're, you're focused on the like technique. Like a ballet dancer, any it, other that's, art form. That's right. Yeah. And, and so, you know, baking a pie, you know, if yeah. you do it wrong, you burn the pie. Well, well and, and this is the same thing. But over the 35 years I've been doing this now, it has become my one of my main forms of prayer, but also evangelization. Be, because the people that are coming here, well, just like myself, uh, you discover that in, in your, well, in, in any kind of prayer, whether it's with, through images or, or the scripture, that w w when you make it part of your own life, yeah. well, God is able to speak through you, through that form. You don't have to say a word. You just, you're, you're, you're internally, uh, I'll give you an example. Sometimes when I was paint, painting or, uh, an image, I said, well, I got 45 minutes. I think I'll, I'll run over and, and, and do some painting. Afterwards, I could tell that my soul wasn't in it. I was just doing it to, you know, doing the form. Right. And, 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 and I would look at it and I, I could see that I'm, I'm never going to do this again. And, and it's, so, so you enter it as a prayer. I was doing it because I wanted to kind of finish this or that. You know, and that can happen in real life. You know, we're going we're to finish this. And we get distracted. And so, yes. So, so then, well, then after two years, then I started teaching. Uh, when, 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 uh, when he was not there, then I started teaching. But then, then through obedience, I had to move, and, and so I went back to the Stockholm area again. And but in these thirty-five years, I I, <clears throat> I then ended up in Rome. And and when I first got to Rome, my job was so busy, and I couldn't paint. Oh. Be because you you have to be at peace inside inside of yourself. Uh, uh, otherwise, it's not a prayer, and it's not going to be. I, I stopped painting. Then, then finally, I told Father General, "I'm this. I'm not praying enough. I'm not reading. Uh, I don't have time for reading. I'm. Th this has got to stop." And so, it it took me about a year to to get back into get back into it, and mm -hmm. then I started painting again. And don't so, we all do that, right? Yeah, yeah. When we stop doing something that we know is good for us, we have yeah. to get back at it. It takes a while to kind of like warm ourselves up back into it. That's right. Like our soul needs to kind of like yeah. rehearse it before it feels at ease there. So so what, what happened now, so then when I came back to the States in 2013, it took me a couple of years to get settled here. But then then the, a, a beautiful thing happened last year was was uh, they got, uh, they accepted me to be able to teach and for students to get credits. At the school. At the School of Theology here in San Antonio. Yeah, so I had five seminarians from different parts of the states and, and different, uh, 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 one uh, diocesan and a redemptress and two Capuchins. And, and so it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And that's what one of these icons is, one of the seminarians is still working on that now here. Okay, so we're um, going to be looking at one of those icons. Sure, All sure, right. sure. So we're going to look at one of these icons, and then we'll look also at other icons that you'd like us to look sure, at. Sure, sure. Great. Okay. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen.
the Pantocrator, Christ Almighty, Christ of all the universe. And uh, if the book is open, it's called Christ the Teacher. And there's a text there then. Usually I am the light of the world or something like that. And then you have the, the Jesus Christ, Jesus on the left side at the top up there, Christ on the, on the right. In Greek? In Greek with the, the little bird flying on top there. That's a, a sign of, uh, of, of you only have the first and the last letter of the words. So, and then inside you have uh, what Moses asked God, who, who shall I say that has sent me? And it, it's the letters of Yahweh, which the Jews don't voice, don't speak. And the gesture of his hand, that's a gesture of blessing? That's a, that's a gesture of blessing. And, and the thumb and the main finger there? Yes. Uh, sometimes that, well, the second finger, that makes a, a, a zero. It, it's a sign of the Trinity. Oh. Yeah. But that's, I can't get my hands to form that way. <laughs> no, it's not really natural. No. So obviously it's a code to tell us something again. Yes. Yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So the halo is, is uh, in, in, into the world, into the, the, our present situation that Christ is, is never, he, he, Christ, it's impossible for him to absent himself. Yeah. From, as, uh, from our reality yeah, from, and from, from our time. Yeah. yeah. Well, if he did, we'd just cease to exist. At some moments, sometimes we, in our, I think in our own prayer and stuff too, we're, like the Our Father, we're, we're speaking to the Father, sometimes to Jesus and sometimes to the Holy Spirit. Because it, it, when I sit down, or even before I go to the studio, I'm, I'm praying to the Holy Spirit to prepare me for what, what, what I want to do there and that I, you know, am in touch with what, what the Spirit wants to say through me to, for others. For others, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it, and because it's, when, I, when I'm doing this, I'm trying to connect too with people I've met during the past week or something, I'm praying for them one morning at the Saturday Mass over there at this uh, grotto. The, these three sisters, as it turned out, wanted to come and talk to me. And, 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 and somebody said, well, she said, I just found out that I have stage four cancer. Oh. And so they were all crying there. And I said, you go, I didn't have any holy oils to anoint. And so I said, I, why don't you go to your pastor? And, and, and asked if you could be anointed along with your sisters and others who are hurting the healing is not just for cancer. No, it's for <laughs> yeah. knowing that your sister has cancer. That's right. Yeah. And, and, and what, what's going on in them. So you all need uh, this grace that God wants to give you. So, mm -hmm. go, and they said they would do that. You know? uh, so, okay. Anyway, so I, that, that's what I think of. I think of people like that that I've met that, you know, on this property. Yeah. Just, just walking by, and that, yeah. that who are in need of God. That's right. Yeah. 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 So, Father Clyde, tell us more um, about this icon. What is the title of this icon again? This is called the Dormition or the Sleeping of Mary. Mary goes to sleep, and and um, so, but they call it the Dormition. It's it. We we say the Assumption in the West. But they don't see it as assumption. They say Mary, Mary either died or didn't die, and she was taken up to heaven, body and soul. So in this this icon, then you have, so Mary is sleeping, and and Jesus is holding Mary, the the body and soul, the little Mary. It looks like a little child here. Oh yes. But taking taking her home. Oh yeah. yeah. And then I just go into and so at, at this rendition of of the Dormition, you have. Paul is on one side over here, and, 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 and not Paul is on this side, kind of bald head, and Peter is on this side. So not really sure Peter, uh, Paul was actually there for the Dormition. <laughs> but anyway, but this is, a, and the apostles are all looking on and sad. And is the blue at the back, does that represent heaven behind Jesus? It's, it's a light. 
light. It, it, it's it's the light of God, and the gold is also the light of God. But but they, that has a special name which I can't remember right now. This what's behind that okay. that oval shape, and then you have you have I just go into a little bit of the symbolism of the colors of Jesus and Mary. So you can see Jesus has his undergarment is purple, Mary's outer garment is purple. Jesus is purple because of his divinity. And then because he's also human, humanity, he has a blue outer garment. And Mary, because she's, she is human uh, fully, then, then she has a blue undergarment, but she's the mother of God. So she has then uh, all the, the same purple garment to show and we her. we would see these colors in other icons as well. That's kind of like a, yeah. a, a code or a tradition for... It, it, uh, it, it's a rule. Our Lady of Guadalupe or others are, you know, they're, they're not following the Russian. I mean, they're following the tradition of, of, of uh, Mexico at the time. Yes. So, but then now if you see Mary here, she has three stars, one on the forehead, one on her left shoulder and right shoulder. And those, those symbolize Mary was a virgin before, during, and after the birth of Jesus. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, and uh, did you not have enough room there for the foot down below? Is that uh, Paul's foot that's sticking out? Yes. No, there was enough room. But the border, th this gold border here, that's symbolizing the present day. And, and so the present day is, is you and I living right now. Yes. Today. And, 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 but this, it's symbolizing that this moment that happened 2,000 years ago has something to say to us today. And, and, and so we're brought into that, that moment, just as scripture written 2,000 uh, years ago, uh, we read it today and the Holy Spirit is within us and, 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 and guides us to see how this can be applicable to our, our, our life today. So we get back to the idea that an icon is like scripture, it is revealing God, and but it also is actual for us today. That's, that's what the foot sticking out means, that we, we can get this today. That's right, that's right. We have the same thing on this little icon here of Thomas, doubting Thomas. And, and we have it up on the top, we have the top of this temple uh, uh, reaching into the, the present. And, and there's a great significance in icons of the white line that's going around here. White line is, is also symbolic of God's light. It's the light of God. We're entering from our present through the light of God for understanding, interpreting, applying in our own lives, this, these moments. So anyway. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And the, um, the symbolism, uh, I just want to highlight this. So in Roman Catholic icons or in other traditions other than uh, the Eastern uh, tradition, the, the artist has more leeway, more freedom. But in the Eastern uh, tradition, there are codes that certain colors mean certain things and there are rules to respect in order to write icons. That's right. I just like to go into one other thing that the, the, the image, the face of Paul and the face of Peter, uh, uh, Peter appears in the catacombs. So there are four faces that, that in, in the Russian Orthodox or maybe even the Greek uh, are, are always supposed to be recognizable. Okay. You're going to know that this is Peter when you see that face. And, you, and, and Paul, too. We should always be able to recognize them without even a name there. And the same is true of, of Jesus and Mary. Now, Mary, in the West, we have the tradition of the Veronica's veil. And in the East, we have another tradition of the king of Edessa. But both of them, it's got to do with the cloth of where Jesus' face appeared on it. So, so in Mary, we have the tradition, we'll maybe look at another icon and about uh, St. Luke, the gospel writer, that he was a physician and, and, and painted the first image of Mary. 
And, and, and so that goes way back. So we're supposed to always be able to recognize Mary too. In, in, in. And another thing about the, these uh, icons, you, maybe the person died and they were old. Maybe the person died when they were young. We always have a, a medium age there. We don't, we don't go by, you know, that. The actual uh, age of the. No, of the person. Okay. So, so, so you, but I don't know why they do that. But anyway, so it's, it's been, uh, it, it's interesting that in my icons, you always know who's Peter and who's Paul and who's Mary. Thank you very much for having us over in your studio, Father Clyde. It's been a great experience to see what an iconographer does and all about um, icons. Is there anything else you would like to add um, for our viewers? Well, there's one thing that's happened to me over the years is, is uh, when you're young, you're not thinking about the next life. You're, you're thinking about this life and and making the best of what God calls to you in this life. Yes. But as I've been doing this over the years, and re and especially during COVID, I have I, I have felt myself um, freely feeling that I'd like to go home. You know, I, I'm ready to stay here as long as the Lord wants, and I really am happy doing this. But you know, when when you meet all of these saints personally in in doing this, you. I, I can't wait to meet uh, Peter, oh. and I can't wait to meet face to face Thomas, oh, Thomas, yes, <laughs> and Mary and Je Jesus too. You know, just to meet meet them. I, I like want, waiting to meet my family too, but especially th this family, the family of saints, and and uh, and Paul. I do, you know you know what were you up to, Paul, and why did you say these things? <laughs> you know? But anyway, it's something like that. I look. I have. I'm looking forward to that day also. Mm, so. as we all do yes. thank you very yes. much sure you're thank welcome. you father you're welcome yeah.